this can be super refreshing and a really life-giving prospect but at the same time it can be an arduous and kind of scary transition which can be wonderful and nerve-inducing and if you're anything like me you might be a little bit afraid of slipping back into old habits of letting toxic and dysfunctional people drain you slipping back into an unhealthy routine and the truth is, we're not the savior, Jesus is. And ultimately, our mandate is to love all people with the love of Christ. But we really shouldn't let ourselves get so entangled in their emotional trouble because it will cause us damage and pain and yes as a Christian we should love and forgive people who have hurt us done things like that to us but there's no mandate to stay near them and the truth of the matter is some And that, my friend, is not a you problem. That is something that they need to iron out with a pastor, a counselor, or a psychologist. Someone who will offer them expert advice and a professional opinion. And if they're not in your office, then they're not getting treatment, right? I... it sounds kind of... I really don't want you to miss out on all the beautiful stuff going on in church because you feel so exhausted caring for your church family and sometimes for your own mental and physical well-being spiritual well-being you need to distance yourself from the drama so As you're adjusting to church gatherings, I would love to give you some tips that might help. They're based on life experiences, poor choices that I've made, love, a little tiny sprinkle of psychology, a little I know anyway. I'm not a professional. But And the first one is to set time limits. I know someone who will talk and talk and talk and talk. And she does not pick up on social cues whatsoever. As I'm an empath, I feel very drained when I'm with her and after I'm with her. So what I've learned to do is set time limits. I will be very clear with her about how long our conversation will be and I've also learned that if someone like this catches you off guard before you can set that expectation for how long things will be you can interrupt and say I'm sorry I did not realize that our meeting our talk would go this long somewhere that I need to be or I need to talk to this person I need to move on and when a clear expectation is established 
most chronic talkers will honor it. <laughs> most. Some won't. But we'll deal with that situation later. <laughs> and my second tip is to engage enthusiastically. The heartbreaking fact is that one of the many reasons people talk and talk and talk is because they're not used to being heard. Uh, they often carry a reputation with them and others avoid conversing with them because So it's kind of cyclical because they keep reaffirming their reputation over and over again and because of that, people don't want anything to do with them. So once you have let them know that you have a timeline and it's established, it's your responsibility. you do this within the scope of the timeline, you'll demonstrate that you actually care instead of just being another person who's trying to get rid of them. Um, sometimes they will start being more concise with you because they realize that you listen better than other people. And what I find really beautiful about that is you walk away knowing that because of you, someone felt heard and loved. And they walk away realizing that somebody cares about them. So that's pretty cool. My third tip would be to help Park the cherry, the chariot. Many, although not all, chronic talkers are extroverted, and some extroverts like to think out loud. I'm that way. Talking a lot is just their way of dealing with a complex situation. And signaling when it's time to stop rolling and it's time to bark. That's such a corny analogy, but I love it. Dale Carnegie instructors often employ this <laughs> when they're happy helping people wrap up their stories in a training session. And they'll ask, not in a rude tone, but inquisitive actually happened. Giving what you said, what conclusion can be drawn from this? What are the action items for me slash us based on what you've said? So, what do you recommend that we do? And what's really beautiful about it is it's helping the talker end things on their own terms, which is really nice. Another one is to interrupt between breaths. Sometimes you can't get a word in because the person just never stops talking. Sometimes you have to wait for 
them to take a moment and to take in a big breath of air. So that's when you interject and say, I need to go and just be really upfront. Just be really real about it. Don't say, oh, oh, oh that's so, that sucks. I have to leave. Just, I need to go. Now, as a last resort, I have some, <clears throat> some tips for if you really, really need to actually avoid somebody because you're not emotional. post potluck. I, of course, don't recommend these as a course of action for every day, but sometimes we need to just avoid someone. So, I remember having a fight with a friend before church, then strolling into church with a fake smile on, and some people can't read past it, or they just don't Anyway, after chatting with about four different people or so, I could feel my facade cracking. And then I saw a particularly lecherous individual beelining for me. And I knew that if they dug their claws into my emotions, I would blow up. So, I swerved to avoid hitting the proverbial car, and I'm glad I did. Um, something that you might find interesting, you might already know, but Jesus knew when to leave. He knew when to go. There's one example of Christ. In Matthew 15, verse 39, where he sends away some of the crowd um, after he had gotten into the boat and gone to the region of Magadan. So he sent people away. And it is interesting that previously in verse 50 and verse 32 he had compassion on the crowds that were following him because they had been following him for three days with nothing to eat and Jesus said I'm unwilling to send them away hungry lest they faint on, faint on the way and so it appears as though Jesus took responsibility for these people despite the fact that they had been coming to him for their needs for three days already but he cared for their physical needs he fed them and then he sent them away so I suppose we can take that as we will right? Um, definitely dodged the Pharisees, the Sadducees. In Matthew 16, verse 4, he does this. He does this because he says that the generation is evil and adulterous, and they're seeking for a sign, an idol. So, And his response was to leave. So, even in Jesus' ministry, we see that there are legitimate times to walk away. So, if you ever feel the need to walk away or avoid certain people, I do have some last resort. Um, so
So one of them is super duper obvious. If you see someone coming towards you and you really don't want to talk, then just leave the premises, sit in your car, maybe process for a few moments before coming back. The more emotionally balanced you are, Another one I have, <laughs> it's so terrible, but it's not, is to fake a phone call. This is great if there are still people around that you want to talk to. So you see that person walking towards you, you just pull your phone out. After a couple minutes, you can put the phone away, maybe they're gone at that point. So, um, another one is if that person is trying to dominate a conversation with you, just bring somebody else into the conversation. Even have someone prepared to do that. Um, and sometimes it can just be so much that you need to go to a different service or as a last resort Maybe go to a different church if that person is just constantly tormenting you. Um, and that being said, I would suggest talking to leadership before deciding to jump ship entirely. They know that person and they will probably be able to help them or help you and help them to avoid awkward situations. Sometimes I need that affirmation that it's okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm not being Christ-like enough because I'm not enduring people. But we really are human and we can be filled with the Spirit absolutely but still be tired and need to draw away. And know for myself that I've, I've contemplated leaving church, leaving that situation because there's so many broken people who are very needy and not a lot of people pouring in and I just want to let you know that if you're experiencing a church like that, please just know that you're not alone and that there are other places for you to go. You don't have to endure that. over you if you're dealing with this sort of thing. So, our Father, creator of all people, even the challenging ones, may he bless you with strength and fortitude and wisdom of spirit to deal with difficult people May he grant you the ability to see the next disaster well enough in advance to dodge it and disable it before it happens. <laughs> May your buttons be hidden from view. you offer sufficient and grant sufficient insight to those people who are being difficult. May you fill their hearts with peace, God, and the knowing that you are with them, even when other
Whenever you're watching this, 